Earthlings. Whoa. Hello, oh. Chris. Hello, Asaf. We are on Hello. Earth. Hey, guys. Hello. Here we are in the great transition, yes. looking at what is going on in the world through the lens of the wisdom of Kabbalah. Guys, uh, yeah. I made a, a lot of rookie mistakes when I came to the wisdom of Kabbalah. I think that uh, probably we all did. Uh, I think that we make it easy, way easier for the new students who are coming because we try mm -hmm. and you know, clarify a lot of those things. Uh, right. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, using a computer back in the day when you had to, like, code everything versus now when you can uh -huh. just speak it into existence with AI, right? So, like, the more it develops, mm. the more mm -hmm. it's the same system, but it just gets easier to use. Um, so, imagine you're searching, like, like my story, like you're searching for years. You feel so empty inside. Everything feels futile. Everything is a lie. The teachers are lying. The politicians are lying. And then you find a book or you find some video or something and even though you don't understand everything you're reading but you feel like there's i don't know what it is but i i found answers there's there's something here uh, yeah everything kind of changes at that moment it's a like a pivotal moment that we all can relate to so a beginner's mistake that i made that maybe you guys can relate to is like i found some true spiritual method i'm going to invest in it with all of my heart with all of my soul and with all of my mind and i'm just going to have faith that everything else in my life is going to work out my health my business my family mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't work like that obviously the we're yeah. in this world yeah we're in this world too and there's a reason for it what can what is that unifying integral force of nature who placed us in this illusion what are we what is that force of nature showing us what is it guiding us towards um all of this all of this now it led me to also look at this world because i realized that you're still dealing with this world and i wanted to see what are the how is this world operating too somewhat and i came across a book by a guy a name ray dalio he manages a hedge fund i have a business and i interested to see like what what am i missing so he talks about these natural patterns um and of course right away as a like a guy who mostly cares about spirituality i was like intrigued also like what is what is what did he see and you know does it match up with what we discovered um so he this guy runs a big hedge fund and his i think his goal at the time was okay i need to figure out how to manage he manages billions of dollars for people so he's looking at huge systems and he says how do i how do i keep making money for my clients when they when things go down and how do i keep making money for my clients when things go up because no matter what's going on he has to be able to preserve their wealth so he started to study financial systems and political systems and history in general and what he saw which i think is great wisdom for everyone is that there's things that didn't yet happen in my life but if I can zoom out, they already happen many times throughout history. So, for example, maybe I'm uh, maybe there's a hundred year flood in my town, and I'm 40, and uh, or I want to buy some beachfront property, and I see a, it's a great piece of property there. I don't realize it's going to flood, and you know it's supposed to flood there in 20 years. So I build right. a house and mm -hmm. you know, raise my family there, and then the whole thing gets mm -hmm. gets flooded. So if I understood that there's a hundred year flood, even though I'm only 40. And the flood happened 20 years before I was born. Um, if I understood this cycle, I could make better decisions. Sure. So, so in the there's also way, a difference between understanding it, like reading about it in a book, and going through it. Because all of the all, all, all also, you know, I look at my my great grandma who's who's no longer alive, but you know, she was one of those who lived through the Great Depression, and she would she would put Ziploc the Ziploc bags in her washing in the dishwasher right it's just like a thing it changes you it changes you yeah yeah so you could have read about all this stuff in a book maybe the things that you're talking about now but going through it also is a as adds a different more real well, so, layer so, to it okay, but there's an issue though because mm -hmm. we don't have the chance we, we didn't go through world war ii you know we right, didn't right. go through the, but but we still have to behave as if it did mm -hmm. happen and something can happen again so just like in a body it goes from you know embryo, infant, then maturity, teenager, parent, <clears throat> grandparent, death, 
like there's a circle of life, you know, like having kids again and then like a circle of life. So humanity, all of humanity together is also an organism that goes through evolutionary stages that repeat over and over again. Birth, development, maturity, death, birth. Development, that's interesting. Maturity, that's, that's something we don't, don't typically think about. We don't usually think about humanity. Right, so where is humanity in that, in, in that cycle? So within humanity, if you, if you start looking, and what he did was he looked at, at, at uh, you know, financial systems mostly, but like empires, like the Roman Empire, the, the uh, well, let's go modern, um, the, in America, before America was England. Um, so there's the hard times. There's some kind of social revolution or some kind of economic revolution. Uh, and then there's a period of, okay, we, we, we put in a new kind of leadership, new kind of economic system, and then there's a period of peace mm -hmm. and prosperity. Yeah, Seth, and can you happens. crank up, crank up your, your gain a little bit? How, how, how's that? Is that yeah, better? Yeah, that's better. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so then there's prosperity and then you get arts and eventually decadence and then society collapses again. There's a revolution and this cycle um, keeps rolling. There is that, that famous Chinese uh, saying too, where I heard it on Rogan, just heard it on another video too, where uh, hard times, you know, hard times create mm -hmm. strong people. I saw the meme. Yeah, I don't remember the rest of it. Hard times create strong people. Strong people create yeah. create yeah. good times. Yeah, uh, a good times easy, create easy weak times people. Create weak people. Weak right. people, and then it just keeps it keeps going. Times. I see it on myself. I feel like I'm so. Yeah, I feel like I'm not adapted for yeah. any difficult situation. That's just it's just not in me. It's like I was created that way. I feel that. <laughs> I feel that's another, my, that's another podcast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, no, but it's very true. I mean, our generation is arguably um probably much more uh, spoiled you know uh than of course we are the, yeah the decadence that's right yeah, yeah. it's I mean, interesting Amazon... it's, it, it, generations are different you know depending on when they were when they were born the people are different people and they have different strength resilience you know stamina even physically but definitely emotionally psychologically too socially For sure so, so yeah. our generation, like, you know, the last time of decadence, like, let's say the 80s in, in the U.S., even without going back to the English uh, or the, the Dutch before that, let's just say the 80s, you know, not that long ago. Um, the details now are different. Like, then maybe it was cocaine and limousines. I'm just making up some, some joke, you know. Today it might be just playing video games all day and, and ordering Domino's pizza and never, never leaving my, my house, Right. Right. The details of the generation are different, but the cycle is the same. And because we're not right, well, here's here's my my question to you guys. Then, how can we? You know, so my my kind of question number one around this: How can we advance correctly? How can we make good decisions if we're not aware? If we don't see the patterns that are there? And we don't see where we are in the pattern. Like, am I about to buy a house in a place that's going to flood in 20 years from now? <laughs> so if I don't see the patterns, if I don't see where humanity is right now in the cycle, maybe everything is supposed to break down right now so that something better can be born. And maybe we should all just get up and be happy in the morning about all of the lies and all of the BS we see in the media and all the crap that we're being fed constantly and all the poisons in the food and all the lying politicians because this means that, you know, this is the decline of something and something great is going to come after. Uh, so I'm, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So the question, the question is, how can we make the right decisions if we don't see the patterns that are there? Maybe we don't see mm -hmm. the patterns, but we definitely see phenomena, current phenomena, right? I mean, take for example... I was, you know, researching this and I heard, you know, the, this, this, the, the typical, the typical symptoms, right. Of like the, of a, of a, of, of a, um, a nation or like a civilization in collapse or, you know, in the, in decline is something that we can kind of see right now, which is interesting where you're have this kind of like 
we're kind of living off that last breath of fresh air that we took maybe in the 80s 70s 60s you can say where things were just good you know it just felt good building things america you know i'm sticking from america's standpoint right we're building things we're strong patriotic right it's it was in society uh of course i wasn't uh, alive then but you can kind of imagine yourself in a society where things it, you were you felt more homogenized more you know under one roof kind of feeling and you go down a few decades later kind of to where we are right now it's like it's like yeah we remember feeling that good we remember that that was there within us but we're we're like we're we can't we don't, can't find it we can't grasp it we're still searching for it and we're looking for it maybe I thought this was really interesting we're looking for it I don't know and and good food you know like oh maybe that's where that good feeling came from or we're looking for it in good movies maybe that's where it was you know maybe that's where it will g- give us that good feeling of of you know having like a strong nation again or whatever it's just a confusing because we're going we're searching for all these other pleasures thinking it's in movies food whatever tv clothes right hot fashion we talked about that on the show a couple times but one of the interesting things i heard was uh, you can never get enough of what you don't need you know that kind of just sticks away so we're kind of like, like in this like last ditched eff- mm-hmm. last ditched effort to to hold on to like this good feeling even though you, it's already it's kind of like dwindling and fall it's kind of like falling between our fingers mm-hmm. it's hard it's hard to recognize it but yeah that's that was a that hit home yeah um so i mean seth asked us how do we you know how do you how do you make decisions individually collectively when you can't see the bigger picture um but i I would say (laughs) let's start seeing the bigger picture i mean that's certainly what what kavala is all about right but even like even what we what we see from human development there's no doubt that without science, we would make uh, a lot more choices that are bad. Uh, without learning something, a little bit, anything from history, we would just repeat the same mistakes over and over again. So um, I, think, I think as human beings, if we want to prosper, if we want to thrive, if we want to have a healthier, better society, life, planet, and so forth, then this should be our focus, trying to see the bigger picture, trying to, this, 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 I would argue this is what differentiates the human from every, everything else, from every other animal, our ability to plan for the future in a conscious, deliberate, uh, social, cultural manner the you know ants for instance they know how to save food for the winter but they do it instinctively right a lot and a lot of other animals um you know live in these cycles that you 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 kind of you i i don't have a, a lot of examples right now in my mind but you know there's there oh there's this um there's this butterfly unique butterfly can't remember its name I uh, can't remember where from, maybe maybe Mexico or something. I think Latin America, yeah. Anyway, but they live in 13 years cycle and they stay underground for 13 cicadas. years. Oh, cicadas, yeah. Yeah, yeah a kind of, uh, uh, a certain kind of them, yeah. Not, and they live underground for 13 years and after 13 years, they come out at a specific time to mate and then there's this like huge, huge... Uh, you know, like forest of, of these cicadas that are um, uh, that are mating at that time. So you know how they didn't, but but for those animals, they don't plan it. Nature just plays out the program of nature just plays out these cycles. But for us as human beings, we seem to have the ability to look towards the future and plan and 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 um uh uh set goals like goal setting right what a human what a human uh area right to goal setting like this is it show me a dog that you know sets goals before the he goes about his day you know what i mean so it's it's a very human thing it's a human quality but we should do that on a global scale, on a collective scale. And yes, we should look at history. We should use science. And 
If possible, maybe we can even look beyond that and look towards, try to find the grand pattern, the biggest pattern. And that should really be, you know, take us to the pinnacle of, of human development. If that's speaking what we of, want to go. Uh, speaking of patterns in nature, I'm going to give, uh, I'm going to give a secret life hack. Mm. Okay, it's a Kabbalistic secret life hack. If you feel that you're going through a spiritual descent, okay. have a sandwich. You may just be hungry. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> this is very, very helpful. Everyone should take this <laughs> That's advice. That's so practical. If you, yeah. Very practical. Yeah, yeah, because sometimes you feel absolutely terrible and you're just hungry or you just didn't sleep. <laughs> right? It's true. It's true. It's true. So yeah. it's good to understand the patterns even in your day-to-day -day life. Like, yes. did I eat? Like, yes. I'm getting really angry at this person in front of me right now. Maybe if I just have a sandwich and come back in 20 minutes, we could have a normal conversation and I will be way more patient. So there's pers there's like, you know, patterns that are running every few hours. There's patterns that are running every few weeks. There's patterns that are running, you know, monthly and, and over the course of years as well. And yeah, we want to start to recognize all of them. Um, we want to start to see even in just our daily life, what the heck is going on? Who are we? What are those forces that are operating on us? And as you said before, like, let's see, what did you call it? Like the, the big, the big. Yeah, let's, um, let's look for the, the greatest, the overarching okay. com so, comprehensive pattern. Yeah. Right. So until, let's take our time getting there a little bit. Before we get okay. to the overarching pattern, let's look at where we are right now as a society Mm -hmm. As like a, as the West, let's say, uh, as opposed to maybe China or somewhere else that's still developing. But let's look at where, you know, let's say America, or maybe we consider you guys in our in our club. Where are we <laughs> now? Um, mm. We we'll call this, you know, where maybe maybe we're at the age of, you know, we're at the age of. Where are we in that cycle? Well, so so this 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 um, hedge fund you um, author yeah. guy the Ray that Dalio, you yeah. Ray Dalio that you mentioned he actually um, from what I've looked um, it's very similar to to a different kind of research from uh, Sir John Glubb uh, lived in the past century um british uh, i think he was uh, some like a big thing in the military and then became a researcher uh journalist author anyway um they both talk about these cycles right and they talk about us being in a an age that marks the decline uh or the collapse of an of empires and they call it the age of decadence we we talked about it a couple uh minutes ago right so decadence, let's, like what like decadence. what like uh luxury yeah. or uh, what a, over saturation what a of pleasure yeah what a word right. huh it's and even just the word just <laughs> is very you know very characteristic of what yeah. you would say western society is today and what's cool is i mean cool academically speaking right right uh, I can't you know, it. <laughs> is is um uh, when they looked at, 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 I'm more familiar with the work of uh, of John Glob. So, when um, when he looked at past empires, and he looked not just at like the the English Empire and like recent Dutch Empire, you know, uh, and what's happening now in the in the U.S., which is more of the focus of Ray, Ray Dalio, right? But he looked more deeper into the past, like the Roman Empire, the Byzantine Empire, the Ottoman Empire, the Arab Empire, the Persian Empire, right? So, and that, and that shows you, like, you know, you go deeper into the past, you go into more empires, you explore more, you see more patterns basically you see more you see a bigger bigger patterns even though it's harder to discern a little bit the farther you go into the past it's harder to know exactly what right happened. and also history, you have, his, history is far from being a you know an accurate not precise science so right you know, and so well, not until of recently, course yeah. of course it's all it's all you know to be taken with a grain of salt i i, I totally agree with that also as, as someone who you know academically comes from you know the the these areas of social sciences and the humanities, there's no doubt that there's no 
precision in these sciences, right? But when you collect a lot of data, patterns emerge, and it's interesting that they call it the age of decadence. It marks the imminent collapse of an empire, and uh, the characteristics or the signs that we're in an age of decadence are things that you know they are all very very don't that they, they, they just ring true internal conflicts and divisions yeah we Check. definitely have that yeah conspicuous display of wealth oh yeah absolutely Big that time. you know yeah um, uh, massive disparity and increase gradually increasingly uh, growing and disparity between rich and poor rich more, and poor more and more people starving yeah. and more and more obese people at the same time right yeah, this and, kind of and like more weird. billionaires you know covid look at covid like covid created more billionaires and at the same time more poverty you know the so the, you have a system that the extremes are growing more extreme general oh, the, the the uh, yeah. the, the um, what's it called when you like boast when you like when you kind of like boast someone up into like sports figures who are like very they become like f figures that are like you know highly so, like yeah celebrities culture. yeah yeah, like an idol like, culture, yeah, yeah which I, they also had in the Roman times and all this stuff. It's the same, yeah, it looks different, you know, like the form mm -hmm. of it is different in our times, but it's kind of just, gladiators just the same exact thing. and we Big have gladiators, NFL right? stars. chariot racers, yeah, we have football yeah. stars, or something. yeah, and if you, I, I would title this whole uh, uh, symptom mass distraction, like weapons of mass distraction, right? Like, the, yeah. the every, every time had their form of entertainment and distraction, and when that. You know, some entertainment is good. The human being needs entertainment. There's no doubt. But when that, when entertainment becomes massive daily distraction in every shape and form, that creates social apathy and and lethargy, and 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 then that become people become docile. They become easier to control. They become less involved um, from a civic perspective, let's say, and they right. don't they really care. care. Less. They don't care exactly, yeah. exactly. And I mean, isn't our time the most the most uh, um, you know characteristic of that? I mean, look at this. We yeah. each live with this device that is designed to make us addicted to distractions every yeah. second of the day we look at this thing what today 150 times a day 200 times a day i think that's the the stats on average it's crazy it's it, we, we're and we're so deep into that the, the 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 phone and the netflix and the whatever you know and the 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 feeds the social feeds and the news and the we're so deep into that that we i don't even think people today younger people have any idea of how it's like to live without that you know what i mean right. it becomes so ingrained in your in your in your neurophysiology even that you're, you're you don't even know <laughs> what it's like to live outside of that um and then uh, another big one is is general like moral decay and declining values one of the um one of the um, symptoms. Let, let's let's spend a few minutes, <laughs> just a minute on that. One of the yeah, big things big is obsession with sex. Now, this again, this is not also repeating uh, itself. Exactly. Yeah. This is not new. This is not new. Everybody today, it's just uh, uh, you know, uh, it's um, uh, virtualized and digitized. But this is. Same thing happened with the Roman Empire and other empires. That when when comes the that point of the de the age of decadence that marks the decline, the focus of people goes towards preoccupation. We, we can with we can. The by the way, we're not we're sex. not being um, we're not being moral yeah, or, or ethical because we can, we can just say, for example, that you really enjoy something when you really want something. What happens in the age of decadence is like. You don't need to work to get a reward. You just go to a website and it's there, or you just pay cheap and it's there. Yeah. You, you, okay. okay. Be, it's just like the the what we always talk about with social media. The um the uh what's it called? Not endorphin. The um. The dopamine. Dopamine. dopamine yeah, 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 right. Yeah. Nice. Right. There, there's no there's no work reward work reward. You know, build up a a real big desire for something. It's just 
you know, just constantly. That's a Jordan Peterson's whole thing too that he always likes to talk about. Let's, you know what? Maybe let's let's do another kind of just disclaimer differentiation here. We're not being, you know, I'm. I'm not, this is not like an ethics thing. We're not being like oh, pious or oh, oh sex is know. bad or anything like that. Sex is good. The desire for sex is natural, normal. It brings pleasure and it's it's a great thing. It's part of the human the human uh, uh, package that we have. The desire for sex. That's well, totally that's how we're totally still here. normal. <laughs> the question yeah. is the the difference is between enjoying sex and being obsessed with it as a society. If we cannot control our eight-year-old's uh, access to, to pornographic content, that might mean that we have a problem socially, culturally. If we cannot, if people cannot uh, uh, report that they're obsessed and addicted uh, and they can't control it, we have a, a problem. If the kind of, um, uh, of uh, measures and standards, social norms and standards that, that you know, young, um, uh, young women, for instance, are, are judged by is based on how sexual they are, if social media uh, is, is constantly rewarding and encouraging to just show that, uh, that side of you and not challenging you intellectually or uh, uh, socially and so forth and spiritually, then we have a problem of obsession. And there's no doubt that our society is probably the most pornified, sexually obsessed society, you know, that has ever existed, probably. Uh, probably. I mean, we, we didn't, I didn't live in the Roman times, but... Um, you know what the internet and, and digital social it's media it's harder to access I'm, the, I'm sure exactly. but if they did have the access who knows what so, would have happened so i'm saying uh, so so that's another thing another big one a uh, big symptom of the age of decadence is political corruption and nepotism i mean come on today i don't even think again and again seth might tell me i'm over i'm giving too much credit to people again but i i think that so many people are so aware that everything you know that 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 the the money people and the power people the people who are in office and the people who are running banks and so forth everyone understands that the you know what's lobbying for example right what's what's lobbying i mean you have people whose job and it's allowed by law is to constantly whisper to decision makers what the people in the bank that run the banks and so forth uh, would like to see in terms of legislation and so forth. And there's this revolving it, door good. also between people going here and working there and then working there. Clearly, the, I mean, anyone doubts this? Tell me, tell me. Is no, this, but it's good it, to contrast that with, with the fact that whenever, you know, we wanted to have this... Uh, the uh, I don't remember what year it happened, and you know where they where they want the, to give more power to the people, so you know everyone can vote, everyone has a right to vote, right? You, you know these equal rights, everyone to vote, which has now been kind of overshadowed by this whole idea of lobbying, right? Why did you want to give the power to the people in the first place? So we can have control, right? We want to be able to make the decisions what's better for us. Right now, you have someone else making decisions what's better for us, which is basically just backtrack, you know, one step forward, two steps back. It's just it, it just shows yeah. you again what, what we're actually encountering is is uh, uh, we haven't really talked about it yet, but we're basically encountering human nature over and over again. Yes. But, yeah, okay, we'll, so we'll I'll, that, I'll, sure. I would just just to kind of wrap up this this age of decadence thing. I mean, if we look to the history, if we look at the people who researched it and said, look, every empire has this age. There's no doubt that all signs are showing we're in this this age of decadence, as they call it, and it's a period that marks uh, imminent collapse. So, right. okay. you know, so, just to... So, yeah. but, but, okay, so we're, we're talking about, okay, uh, this is where we are in the cycle. Most people mm -hmm. are focused on you know, what's going on today. Right. You mean like, not looking forward. What kind of yeah, they like want to okay, look at what kind of yeah, this the, order all these they... exactly, all these things are big. They're uh, you know, what am I, <laughs> what am I doing today? Right. What is what yeah, is right, right here? Yeah. Okay. So, yep. we're trying to talk about some kind of universal patterns, and even if the people pick up their head for a minute and say, "Yeah, you're right," I do see a pattern there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, well, here's the next question then. 
if we if we're willing to recognize those patterns and say okay um the patterns exist and okay i start to see where we are in the pattern then my next question is what's the use of of anything we do if i'm born at a time where the empire is collapsing and my great-grandchildren will be born at the time of prosperity and then my great great grandchildren will be born at a time of decadence. <laughs> Their children will come at the time of decline. And, right. and just, so, so if I zoom out enough and I get enough data and I understand when to eat my sandwich and when I need to take, go to sleep and, and when the empire is rising and when the empire is collapsing. So I found out that I'm just in a system that's marching on you know, if I'm lucky, I get to be born at a time when things are good. And if I'm unlucky, I, I'm born at a time when things are bad. Right. But mm -hmm. what, what, what's, what, what does it matter? Basically? What, yeah, what does it even matter then yeah. what I do? If no matter what I do, you know, we want this one to run to win the election. No, we want that one to win the election. It doesn't matter. Your, com your country has had its 250 years. That's it. It's <laughs> on the decline. That, that the way that you painted it, it makes it makes it yeah, it makes you feel so insignificant, which I guess is maybe something that we should take up on ourselves. This kind of like this view of looking at the bit, very big picture, but I, it's still I feel like people, and this is another thing maybe you would agree with that. I feel like people don't understand. They can't feel that they're in, that human society necessarily has this has this uh, pattern, you know, this template that it goes through. It, it because we we separate ourselves from this bubble of nature you know nature is this thing on the outside i go into a forest i go into the rainforest whatever then i'm in nature mm. but like and in my city in my home i'm not so much in nature we kind of it's the psychological problem that we have and but you can easily you can easily see you know uh uh you know at this like ebb and flow entropy right homeostasis you look at all the nat the gas cycles the water cycle right you see how things happen on the outside, right, and in, in, in nature, and you forget right. that hu that human society is also part of the system. So where are the pat? Where's the pattern that we should see on human society? We see it everywhere else in nature. So where is it in human society? We're we're just now kind of starting to take a look back in history, right? Not too long ago, and see that ah, there are patterns. So wait a second. So uh, what do we do with those patterns? That's kind of the qu I, your question. I, I, I like, okay, so the... what, here we are. So what do we do? Yeah, I yeah, love okay, the so. paradox. I love the paradox that we're talking about. That's that, incredible. Like, it's 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 so so uniquely human, you know. Like we we're such it's such a fascinating situation that we're in. Where where when you look at nature, you see patterns everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Even when you study history, you can see patterns in human behavior and and in the rise and fall of empires, like we just discussed, That's... and so forth. And still. Our personal, immediate, visceral uh, orientation to reality and, and feeling of the world and sense of life is that we have complete free choice and we have and you know and the, there's no pattern that controls me right i mean yeah i can l study about it but i don't feel it like, I, I decided like what it. to eat for breakfast exactly I decided what color <laughs> shirt to put on today i decided what i'm going to do at work and all these things but if i yeah. zoom out like everything is following yeah. A pattern. There's a huge yeah. disconnect there of, of how how is me choosing what shirt there's I'm wearing a, today? How does that fall in the spectrum of wow. of this yeah this what's cycle the, that's going through? There's a big there's this, a lot to um, fill in there. What's this guy's name? Um, performer uh, mentalist they call them right? Like the, the some yeah. these people who like do all kinds of magic, but it's more like brain washing magic anyway. Right. No, no, but he's like a he's, he's like a like a rational kind of guy, and he um, an Israeli guy. No, no, no. Anyway, oh. he he shows beautifully <laughs> how you know when you plant an idea in in a person's mind, and you you drive them through a certain path where they see certain advertisements, they'll make a certain choice. You yeah, know, right. the I saw, the uh, yeah. The, yeah. No. So, yeah. So I saw anyway, and I'm and I just thought about it that if we zoomed out, we're all each of us is constantly being taken through that <laughs> through that kind of engineering right. of our choices. 
um, you know, with the, with what you with the advertisements you see and the entertainment you consume and the kind of uh, different social interactions that you have, and that ultimately decides dictates what you even decide to eat or to do or to yeah. wear or to you know lay on top of that all... genes and where you what what parents yeah. you were born to and what society what time right. yeah yeah so you, you definitely chose like... your parents yeah right so, so we're left the, with nothing the... we got nothing right <laughs> yeah the, go ahead even so. if the the different um political and economical um, details change or what minerals are available, right? Like if we didn't discover silicon, so we would have different problems now, right? If we didn't discover oil, right. there would be like different problems. So even though all of the dressing, all of the, 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 the outer kind of details change, what does stay the same? Human feelings of fear human feelings of jealousy, hmm. human feelings of greed, human feelings of love. The humans, the human so far, stays the same. So it doesn't matter if you give them weapons of sticks or if you give them weapons of atom bombs or it doesn't matter if you give them um, uh, uh, English pounds or U.S. dollars or you give them horse and carriage or you give them Ferrari the the essential building block of of all of these systems is still the feeling human in there with his greed and his you know all of his his ambitions and this uh, is the part that's connected is tied to uh to, to those um to those patterns and, and you didn't answer my question yet though guys so if you well, discover well, didn't we uh, didn't we <laughs> Well, you said it was a paradox. I don't remember that you answered it. If you're if you're stuck, if you realize that everything is a pattern, yeah. and even if I choose whatever shirt I want and I chose whatever I wanted for breakfast and I chose where I'm going to work for a living and I chose which car to buy and all of these things I think I made, if I zoom out, I start to see that I'm just part of yep. cycles. I'm part of this cycle and I'm a part of this cycle and I'm also a part of yeah. this cycle and I'm a part of my country cycle and I'm a part of... So where... Where am I? What do I have any control over anything in my life? Right. So there, the, mm. I, I haven't found any solution to this without the wisdom of Kabbalah. There's, there's, there's really only by because our our choice is on a different level. It's on a different level. When you learn that, you're freed from, um, from, thinking that from looking for freedom in the wrong places. <laughs> basically we cannot change the pattern are we should we go deep into this now or are we as um, deep as possible the, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, okay. uh, well, what, what exactly did we, are we presenting up until now what we're saying I, okay, seth so, so insists all, on the question if there are patterns so, so, how how are we free where is freedom so, so hold on yeah. first of all i didn't know there was patterns and then i discover that there's pat right because they didn't happen to me yet but if I start zooming out a little bit, okay, I see there, okay, there's patterns. Now I got it. Yeah. Right? Like, I, before I start arguing with my spouse, I'm going to make sure she had something to eat because after she eats, like, the conversation is always much better, right? I just see patterns now, right? Wherever they are, you find them all. Well, you could say life. laws, too. I mean, laws are basically, laws I mean, nature. these laws whatever, whatever, just create whatever. patterns. That's even right. more simple. Okay. Yeah. So there's patterns. There's patterns in me, there's patterns in my home, there's patterns in my town. There's patterns, you know, in the decades. Okay, I see that there's patterns. Now my life is going to be better because I can I anticipate them. But now I got another question. If everything is these patterns, so what the hell am I? Am I just a? Uh, I'm just an ant in in this big mm -hmm. system. I mean, is, do I have any freedom? What am I doing in this system? I'm just one cell now in this whole system. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was the second question. I, I guess I guess what you're trying to say is, do we accept that we're under the uh, under the control? Is that what you're trying to say? No, I mean, you, we can, accept you can go on are? in ignorance and, and say that the patterns don't exist and I'm not in them. But for the person who starts to recognize the patterns and starts to recognize that that, that he's in those patterns, then what? And Asaf They've got to say what for. They have to say what for. I mean, that's the only next step. just threatened us. Next step. Gonna, what did he say? He's going to take it, take, go deeper. So I'm, I'm... <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm wondering Why? if we, if we, um, if we go deep to like discuss, you know, what is 
true freedom, which takes us to a spiritual kind of um, discussion about man's inner um, inner realm. Or we want to talk about freedom from a global perspective. Like if humanity is, if society is governed by these patterns that even, you know, uh, researchers are seeing from history, then where do we have choice as a society? I have, I have, also, I have, I have the setup right here. The setup okay. is, listen, we've got, the, there's the decline right now of, let's say uh, we're witnessing right now, we're living in right now, the decline of the superpower of our time, right? The United States of America had its peak. It's now falling. There's, there's, there's words, right? There's gossip of other countries taking control of maybe if it's a, in turn, like uh, if the me looking in front of what I have right now, that's what can we do to stop it? Right. Right. What can we do to change it? How can we make it better? Uh, how can we avoid all the bad stuff that's about to happen if the dollar, let's say, is, stops becoming the reserve currency? There's a lot of repercussions from that, right? There's a, you know, it's a little, it makes me feel a little bit worried that things that uh, drastic changes that are coming are going to make my life a little bit worse. I think that's kind of the personal point that someone listening to such conversations about you know this uh, uh what are we saying the change in the new in the world order right what is the world order it's just a change of who's on top right so if that changes there's a lot of that could affect me well, personally okay so how okay. do we look at that maybe so uh, is the is the changing world order again just who's on top is that the only thing that's that's really that's really the question i mean going back to that old saying what did, what was it a chinese saying that that um that we will be the strong all, people we all recalled yeah we all recalled like in the beginning of the show so tough times create strong people strong mm. people create easy times easy times create weak people weak people create tough times so uh here's check this out the the when uh, when our teacher uh Kabbalist dr lightman was uh asked about this um, in a conversation, just for, uh, more or less when, when COVID came up, uh, he had a conversation with, uh, with our friend Senka. So the, uh, I'll, let, let me loosely kind of repeat the points from that conversation, right? So, so uh, he was asked about this, you know, is this, if the times are hard right now, will that create stronger people and then just continue again and again and again is that's what's is that what's going to happen right and he said uh roughly uh, paraphrasing he said no and here's why because what this old saying represents is that people have understood the law of humanity's egoistic development meaning that up until now we have been evolving according to this law. When we're talking about the, the egoistic phase of human development, it doesn't have a choice. It has to develop this way. We go up, we go down. Tough people create uh, tough times, create strong people. Strong people create easy times. Easy times create weak people. Weak people create tough times. And then people get stronger and so forth. And it's like a wheel that goes forward and we constantly see the up and the down. And Ray Dalio's uh, sketches also look yeah, like this, this kind of, right? Okay, okay. And, you know, the, the, the John Glob research also, the, decline, the rise and fall of empires, sure. We're, that's what we're seeing in the egoistic phase of development. But in our time, something else is going on, is beginning to happen. And it's complicated because, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just repeat what, what was in the conversation first. So in our time, we have to reach a state where we begin to activate... And how we activate, that's another whole thing we need to get into, but it's not in our ordinary means. It's not through a financial system or an educational, uh, political system, or it's, it's through our growing desire. We have to activate a new kind of force, a different kind of force that begins to work together with our egoistic force of development. And then we're going to work between with those two forces and we're going to go to a completely different level of development now we need to we need to go into details but that's the stage that humanity is going into right now let's slow let's slow so, that down okay yeah, yeah let, let's we slow should that down yeah okay so mm -hmm. 
we, if, to recap what you just said, because of human nature, this yeah. and this, which, which uh, as Kabbalists, the, 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 the whole method rests on the creation, which is a desire to receive pleasure. Creation moves based on its desire to receive pleasure. So, so w the whole process of strong men create good times, good times, that whole thing, yeah. it's just about at each stage how to receive the most pleasure. That's, that's the soft. It's an that's unconscious, running. it's like an unconscious development. It's like, you're not thinking about it. That's just what it, happens. It, that's, there, there's that's no it. choice in the process. It's a pattern that has to continue. And what Seth is emphasizing is that it's, it's driven by our desire to receive pleasure. And that's it. Yes. Okay. Not criticizing it. Just no, no, it's not so good. Not bad. It's it just is, human nature. And yes. And yes. That, that's and what's that, leading this. And the draw and the rise and fall of empires, everything. Yes. Okay. So yes. let's say it's an up and down, but really what it's happening, it's it's a cycle. It's a, make like a spiral. It's, right. It's, it's like so what's down, so what's the new force? Up. So so what's right. the new so force? So let's let's call this up until now. Yeah. Let's call that uh, uh, a force of right and a force of left. Let's say when it's going up or or just up and down. Okay. We have these two forces. Yeah. Right and left might be confusing up. with something else. Okay. Later fine. On. Okay. Let's just say like pistons or something. Let's just say like. Yep. There's two forces, up and down, and up and down, yep. right? Up until now, this has been the whole development of humanity. Yes. Now you're talking about some other force, something else yes. happening. Okay. okay. So let's talk about it. Um, it's, it's, it's very uh, tempting to talk about it in Kabbalistic terms, but they might sound very... Um, weird and misconstrued by people if I start talking about you know the the governing force of nature and so forth without prior knowledge it'll be difficult so let's do it that, like this we all understand that we are connected right the the we understand that nature is a single system we there are patterns in nature and all we do is gradually discovering them what we don't know about how something works is just because we're not seeing the connections so what is becoming gradually revealed and that is the 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 um the back side of this of this force that is awake, awakening new force of development what is becoming gradually revealed between us is in our time is something we can call global interdependence that that's a that's an easier thing to understand right it means you can grasp that, that concept yeah. that that it means that across the planet we are beginning to be so intertwined so connected to each other so dependent on each other and i'm, I'm talking in a very simple material way transportation wise trade and commerce politically culturally social media the internet everything you produce goes through half the world today if one country falls that will inevitably influence like half the world if if a big empire falls unlike in the past and us is a huge empire that that has right. threads and spider webs connecting connecting the whole world if it falls it will not fall alone there's no such reality anymore it doesn't I think even we can feel that. It, it 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 doesn't it's it's not like we it's not like 100 years ago the world has changed dramatically in that respect global interdependence and therefore another kind of force is arising in human development so the old force doesn't go away that's the ego drive the desire to to get to be more fulfilled to get more to have more to to get more pleasure to to develop to prosper to to go to space to develop technology to be in power to be in control that's the human ego that's one on account force of others of, that's uh, the account of others yes that's one force of development with this force so far we had the cycle 
tough times, stronger people, stronger people, easy times, weak people, tough times. That's one force of development. Now another force steps in, and that is the inevitable interdependence across the planet. Right this under our means, noses that happened too. Right like under happened, our noses. We didn't even know. Yes. What that means is that from now on, we're going to see that we have to take this force into account. Not because we want to care for each other. No one wants to care for any for anyone nope. else. I'm not nope. saying people will suddenly start being caring of each other and, and you know, they'll appreciate that. No, we're going to see that we don't have a choice but to take the whole system into account. You're going to see it financially. You're going to see it politically. You're going to see it culturally. You're going to see it digitally. You're going to see it in every ecologically. Absolutely. You're going to see this everywhere. And and this is now already uh, um, uh, becoming a part of decisions that even leaders are making. What is happening today with the, the Russia and Ukraine war? What, it just went away? It just stopped? No, it didn't stop. But what is going on there? Why didn't it end like a you know in in a more kind of classic winner loser situation? There there are so many dependencies today that when um, um, when something happens in one place, it influences a lot of other places, and it's going to grow more and more this global interdependence to the point that the the entire system can grind into a halt if something is not working somewhere. If, and if there's a problem in one country, you're going to see ramifications from little things like shortage of chips, uh, you know, like electronic chips or, or like or shortage of supply materials or all kinds of things, supply all kinds of things like that to bigger things like COVID all of a sudden, why does it, part of the reason that COVID is such a global, was such a global pandemic is because we have become global. There was no such uh, situation before where people traveled across the world every day in millions, right? As one of the, this is one of the, mm -hmm. the aspects of it. So this is the force that humanity now has to come to terms with. This is how we identify it: global interdependence. What do, what do you mean, come to terms with? Because it's like it's like right. Um, it's like now we okay. We have to. We have to take it into account. Yeah, we got it. We have to take it. What does that? What does that I'm, mean? If, if you want to go out to work, okay, go ahead, Seth. Yeah. If I'm if I'm walking, right? I want to go yeah. forward. I want to go. So I want to go get to my goal. So I I step forward, say with my right foot, right? Mm -hmm. But how far can my right foot reach? You know, I can't. My right foot isn't going to reach. I can't take one step and go a thousand miles so the next thing that my right foot needs to do is go backwards mm -hmm. and then this one can go forward and the next thing it has to do is go backwards so even this understanding we don't have to look at every single thing that's happening as some kind of horrible tragedy we just start to understand the procession of how we're advancing now add on top of that what is the goal we're going towards? That's like the the, the third, um, the third pillar. And Asaf, maybe you can you can emphasize that part too. But the first thing is understanding the procession through time between these two forces that are that are moving forward. It sometimes it feels like like any if you put a, a point. We talked about this before. If you put a point on a circle, on a wheel, mm -hmm. you know that that's rolling forward. Half the time it's going backwards. Yeah. But, it, but but all together it's going forward <laughs> it's going forward right yeah so now now in addition to this procession there's this goal that it's going towards so you you have a lot of tools available to you here now from this new this new vantage point you, you start to understand the me the mechanics of what's happening and you start to understand where the mechanics is leading you and all of a sudden there's a lot of freedom in here there's well it makes you think of the Go ahead. It makes you think like, you know, uh, uh, the old way of thinking, what's the cause for all of this? You're looking for the cause. Oh, the healthcare, the, the lobbyists, they did this, so we need to give more money over here. That There's like kind of this old way of looking at it. And then there's there's a, maybe a new approach where Asaf is now talking about this, and like, I don't know, using this new force. We don't, no one knows how to use a new force. Like, well, I'm going to go to the capital and suggest a new force. 
You know what I'm saying? Like okay. there's a, still a okay. disconnect. Okay, let's 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 try to bring it down. So people will gradually we're, we're we're going a little bit we're a little bit talking in a futuristic way here. A little bit. We have to cuz cuz you can't explain a pattern without looking ahead a little bit, right? You can't uh, if you're describing uh, a phenomenon that is in the works, you have to look a little bit ahead and extrapolate in order to understand yeah. what's happening now, okay. right? So we have to talk a little bit towards the future. As we go into the future, people, and that includes uh, not just ordinary pe people, you know, the common people, leaders, uh, people in high offices and positions and so forth, they're going to see that... There's a problem with the old approach. We're too connected to everything. We're too connected to everyone. It's I can't just go and um, um, go ahead and you know not give a damn about anything and just do whatever I want. There's repercussions everywhere, even to the point that it comes back to me. So that's one. That's that's I think is the main point. Yeah, it comes back to me, and then I'm willing to think about it. <clears throat> right. So 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 even to the point we can go ahead and we don't have a lot of time, but we can give a lot of examples for this, from violence and war to economics, uh, to healthcare. We can talk about this in many in many aspects. Cyber warfare, you know, all of that. AI is going to exponentially speed up this process because everything is being, the potential for damage and good is going to become just as you know much bigger. But um, 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 so so global interdependence is rising. Our awareness of global interdependence will rise as well. And then, and this is the critical point, we're gonna have to begin to develop a new kind of attitude to how to ourselves and how we conduct ourselves in order to coexist in order to have balance in order to have uh to have a good life that's it's amazing we've just ignored that for so long we've been, yeah, anything it... but that we are so good at just ignoring only that but it makes sense but you know it's but it's, but it's yeah, but it's a re it's, time, it's a revolution it's, it's a revolution right. in the human psyche it's it's not it's it's so simple on the one hand you know Barcelona writes in his the end of his article peace in the world after he he lays out all of the the history of humanity and how there's always the the weak and the poor and then they fight each other and the same kind of cycle we were talking about and at the very end he says you know what it's really just a psychological transformation that we need to go through yeah. to, to to understand it before yeah. the but, but even that is a huge transformation uh and that even just is just the the precursor to a spiritual transformation so so first we have to understand we're all inter interdependent now we have to start activating uh, acting differently towards that interdependence this will grow to the point that we will begin to as if um, counter our egoistic development but it's not let me be precise here it's not that the ego is going away we're not eliminating the human ego we're not uh, um, reducing separating it separating from it bye bye yeah, yeah, it, yeah no we are developing within us a counter force and by those two forces together the human ego and our consideration of our interdependence, let's call it, right? I'm trying to yeah. talk on a very kind yeah, of social way, right? So like these two forces are going to be the forces between which we evolve. Between them, we can't expand on this now too deep, that's where we're going to find free choice on a deep spiritual level because we will begin to feel how both of these forces are forces of nature and by being in between them we have choice we have choice in how much we manage to merge them in a way in a way that works that, again that that's There's too the deep, real human too deep right for there. us to, but that's we'll where the human will will come from i don't know how 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 good of a job of we've done here the, the for people who never heard this the, before <laughs> the changing world order it was all right yeah it was good uh yeah, so everyone got plenty of uh, life hacks and tools on today's show, and that was fun. Uh, there's you are kidding, system. right? 
Yeah. We're in a system of we're in a system of uh, of laws. There's patterns. There's recognizable patterns. We can understand who we are in the system. We can understand what the forces are in the system. We can understand how the forces are working on us in the system. We can understand how to work with those forces, and how to live a good, comfortable life, and how to exit this temporary lie filled life and enter something eternal. That's what we're aimed for. We'll be back next Thursday. Chris, Asaf, as usual, incredible to be with you guys. Pleasure. All the earthlings out there, we love you. We'll see you next week where we will talk about what's going on in the world through the lens of the wisdom of Kabbalah. See you soon. Bye. Next week, everybody. From this nightmare we've been facing, wake up. Tell me how we going to overcome. Find a new way to love